Okay, so now we will continue with the first with amphibians and afterwards we will move to Madagascar and I would like to invite uh, Professor Franco Andreone um, to the stage and I'm really curious to see what he's going to tell us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, to Aquatis, uh, to Michel Ansarme and uh, Sabine for having invited me to have uh, this talk uh, or these talks uh, today. And uh, I'm very happy also because uh, I'm just following the presentation by Ilaria and talking about uh, amphibians, uh, as you may understand. Amphibians uh, are uh, our main goal, uh, and of course uh, they have uh, special uh, relationships with uh, um, fresh waters, and so it is important that we are here to talk uh, about uh, the problems that um, animals like amphibians are facing by now. So uh, at the beginning, uh, I was um, I, I had prepared. Uh, a presentation with uh, a general cover uh, that it is not uh, now here, but um, uh, uh, I had written uh, amphibian conservation from local to global, especially because the first uh, talk is about uh, Lanza's salamander, Lanza's salamander and uh, conservation issues. So uh, I am a curator at the Natural History Museum in Turin, Italy. And uh, since a um, long time, uh, I'm working uh, on the, the amphibian uh, crisis uh, around the world. Just a few months ago, we published um, a paper on nature uh, stating again uh, that amphibians uh, are just uh, the most threatened uh, tetrap tetrapods uh, in the world with uh, more than 40% uh, of the species uh, under severe threaten. So uh, it is important uh, to, to have a look at uh, their situation around the world. As you may see here, I don't know if it is possible, I just, yes. Um, just in Italy we have uh, several, um, several uh, critically endangered species. And uh, they are, uh, uh, there are, uh, at the beginning, uh, uh, salamanders. So, originally, in Europe, um, mm, there, there were only two species of salamander known. The, the fire salamander, as you, as you may see uh, at the left here, salamandra salamandra, and uh, the black salamander, or alpine salamander. So, the distribution uh, for the two species, uh, uh, were more or less known, so the fire salamanders mainly, mm, sorry, uh, mainly in uh, in Central Europe, uh, uh, Peninsular Italy, and uh, the the black salamander just uh, on the Alps and uh, nearby areas. But in uh, uh, 1988. Uh, uh, we had the chance uh, to, to describe a new species uh, of um, salamandra from the Alps, just, uh, just around uh, my town, Turin, so in the southwestern, southwestern parts uh, of uh, Cotian Alps. This is the species, so you, you, you see it is um, not so different from, uh, at the first sight, from the alpine salamander, but in reality, uh, in reality, the species is uh, quite uh, different from the genetical point of view and uh, for, for other aspects. The distribution of salamandra lanzai is uh, more or less limited to a few uh, uh, alpine uh, valleys uh, around, um, around uh, uh, the Monviso Massif, uh, mainly in Italy, but only with a few, uh, part, uh, few small parts uh, in uh, uh, in the nearby uh, Fran uh, French areas. And um, these valleys are the, the, uh, the Po Valley, the Pellice Valley, Sangone Valley, Germanasca, Pu 
plus uh, Val de Lubay uh, in France. The differences between uh, uh, Lanzas salamander and uh, black salamanders are not immediate, so they are both black at the first side, but uh, the Lanza salamander is much bigger than, uh, than uh, um, Salamandra atra, and uh, the, the, the tip of the tail is rounded in Lanzai and uh, pointed in atra. And uh, there are also several uh, small vertebra pores along the uh, vertebral spine in Atra, which are absent in Lanzai. This was the original situation in reality. Along these years, we, we or maybe other persons, uh, discovered uh, other, other uh, taxa of uh, uh, alpine salamander, for example, uh, the Salamandra Atra aurora from Bosco del Dosso, uh, and the Salamandra Atra pasubiensis from another uh, uh, area in northern Italy. So you can see that uh, they are not no more so, so much um, so so black. Uh, so they have uh, they have uh, uh, general uh, yellowish uh, coloration on the back. This is a female of Salamandra Atra aurora. And this is uh, an individual of Salamandra atrapasubiensis, which have small yellowish uh, spots uh, on the body. Then, uh, also in Salamandra lansai, it was discovered a sort of variant with a small, small yellowish uh, spots. But uh, at present, it was not described as a new subspecies because only a few individuals were, were found which, with this kind of strange, strange coloration. An important uh, aspect uh, for the uh, alpine salamanders as a wall, so salamandra um, atra and salamandra lansai, is that uh, they, they, they have, uh, they show a placental viviparity, so they, uh, they, have, uh, they do not uh, lay uh, eggs, but uh, they, uh, they, they have uh, embryos which develop in the body of the mother. So, uh, in general, this is uh, considered as a sort of adaptation to uh, high altitudes. And uh, uh, so, at the beginning, uh, there, are, there are several small uh, embryos in the body of the mother. Uh, you can see here in the X-ray. Uh, but uh, at the end, uh, only a few mm, small salamanders uh, survive because they feed on the, on the brothers, on the siblings uh, inside the body of the mother. And uh, so, uh, at the end, uh, at least in Salamander Lansai, we have uh, a variation from one uh, to, to six uh, salamanderlets, uh, and so this depends on the populations. We do not uh, know too much uh, about the fritz uh, affecting uh, mm, these species, at, at least uh, for the predators. So we found uh, uh, a few individuals uh, predated by other animals, but we do not uh, know exactly if they are birds or if they are mammals, and probably uh, for this individual it was, uh, it was a bird, but we don't know yet with uh, certainty. So but, uh, there, there are a few more studies that uh, are showing that possibly mammals are also predating uh, these animals, even if the coloration of the animals uh, totally black is uh, something that it is called aposematic coloration. Aposematic coloration is sort of advertising coloration against the, the predation. Uh, another aspect that uh, anyhow we, we start to, to understand is that um, these animals are much threatened by uh, emergent pathologists. For amphibians, uh, there is the so-called BDs, uh, small, uh, small uh, fungi, uh, and uh, uh, there is another one, Bissal, uh, Batrachochytrium salamandrivorans, which affects only urodels, so only uh, salamanders, newts, uh, and similar amphibians. Due to this, uh, the UCN in the last assessment put uh, uh, several of the um, Italian salamanders uh, inside the uh, critically endangered categories using the E criteria, which is a criterion which uh, uh, takes into consideration the possibility that in the future 
this kind of uh, pathogen will arrive in Italy. So this was a sort of change uh, inside the categorization, but uh, uh, it uh, takes into, considera into consideration these problematics for the future. Uh, what to say uh, more? Uh, so uh, in, in these years, we also study uh, the, the longevity of these animals using, using a, a particular methodology, methodology which is called the skeletal chronology, which uh, uh, um, takes into consideration the uh, small sections made on long bones of the individuals, mainly phalanges. So it is possible to, to, to know which is the longest uh, uh, age reached by each individual. So counting these kind of lines of arrested growth. Uh, of course, this, uh, this is a section uh, stained with uh, several uh, particular colorations. So uh, we have uh, quite an impressive data set of uh, um, longevity in Salamandra Lanzai, starting from the uh, 90s of the last centuries. So we can make a comparison with, uh, with several aspects. Uh, and in fact, we published uh, at the beginning uh, uh, an important uh, paper together with uh, Claude Mio and other uh, colleagues uh, stating the, 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 the age, longevity, size and maturity and gestation duration of this uh, uh, peculiar salamandra. And it was, uh, for example, evident that it was a ve very uh, long-lived animal, uh, reaching uh, um, 22 years. So it is an, an, an animal with uh, with uh, a, a very long longevity. This is uh, an, uh, an histogram showing uh, this uh, difference. Uh, so this is uh, uh, different uh, according to the, several, uh, to the several populations because of course it is dependent on the altitude, on the altitude where the populations lie. But other, other fruits also are, are present in the, this area. One, uh, one important fruit, but we, we didn't uh, know yet uh, uh, how much it, it impacts with the population is the, uh, the, the cattle, uh, which is uh, present in the area. So in many, many situations, we, uh, we can find uh, uh, dead animals, which probably were just uh, crushed by these uh, cattle on, uh, on high altitude. But uh, another, uh, maybe more important uh, aspect is the, the, the so-called uh, car traffic. It is um, quite impressive to talk about uh, car traffic for, uh, for a high altitude uh, uh, amphibian. And this is a, a, a picture of the uh, Pian del Re in uh, high Po Valley with a lot, uh, a lot uh, of cars. This was taken several years ago, but the situation is uh, a little better now, but uh, uh, cars can, can always go there. And in another place, which is called uh, uh, Valpellice, uh, we find, still find animals dead on uh, the interpodal road. This is evident. So there are um, many, many individuals crashed every, every year. So uh, even if these animals are not so much in total numbers, we also make a simulation, uh, made a simulation using uh, the software Vortex, uh, and it was clear that in a few years, uh, uh, the population could uh, crash, could decline, if this kind of mortality uh, will continue. This is because uh, uh, Salamandra lansai, like uh, Salamandra atra, it is a so-called K species, so a species adapted to a well-stable environment. So when you put a, a, a percentage of mortality more, so the population will suffer. And uh, uh, in these years, uh, colleagues of mine also uh, developed the conservation strategy by putting uh, uh, plastic barriers uh, along these uh, interpodal uh, Car, uh, car road, and uh, we hope that this will uh, diminish the, the, the problematics with the, uh, with the um, dead. 
Another uh, problem uh, was um, a destructive flood occurred in the year 2000 in another um, mountain valley in Germanaska Valley. This is uh, uh, very, very impressive because th there was this uh, uh, flood which uh, destroyed part uh, of the, uh, of the, the river banks uh, and uh, the local municipality uh, destroyed much more the situation and uh, uh, put uh, some uh, concrete uh, along, uh, along the river and uh, the problematic was that uh, uh, the population of Salamander Lansai, which was very, very abundant at that time, declined uh, uh, in, uh, in, in a very, very uh, sudden way uh, by 50%. And, uh, uh, and also, uh, we, uh, we projected our, our, uh, our feeling that the population should have um, crashed again uh, some, uh, some years, in, and in 100 years it was not mo more possible to, to find more salamanders. Uh, of course, this, this situation is uh, quite uh, theoretical, and uh, uh, we have to, to check uh, much more the situation. So, uh, to, uh, to increase our, uh, our understanding of the species, uh, we also uh, mm, studied uh, the, the, the effect of climatic change on the life of the alpine salamanders and also because they are animals living at high altitudes. And uh, for doing this, we, we used two, uh, two uh, methodologies. The, 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 the first one is the species distribution modeling. And then the second one is by using what, uh, what I already showed, so the, the so-called skeletal chronology, uh, studying the, uh, the, the longevity of the species. For uh, uh, the SDM, so the um, species uh, um, distribution model, uh, we also uh, published recently a study uh, putting in relationship the, uh, the situation for Salamandra Lanzai and also for Salamandra Atra on the Alps. And it was, uh, uh, it was uh, quite nice to, to understand that, of course, the problematics were uh, uh, reality. So uh, it, the projections uh, in all the way that were done uh, presented a, a real effect in the future. And uh, it is clear that in, in a few years, in a few decades, the, the, the population will decline ever for Salamandra Lansai and for Salamandra Atra. Also because the species uh, live in high altitude and uh, this uh, uh, global warming will, uh, will produce a sort of uh, upsloping of, of the animals. But of course it is not possible that at a certain point they, they, they can move much more. So uh, many populations uh, are uh, destined to to extinction. So uh, in our, in our, in our uh, paper, uh, which was published on the Journal for Nature Conservation, we also proposed that uh, for Salamandra Lansai, it is important to follow, to follow the populations and in case also to develop uh, captive breeding programs uh, and reintroduction pro programs. Of course, the, 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 the situation uh, should be taken in consideration with particular care also because uh, there, are, there are sites that need to be identified. For this, uh, we, we, used, uh, uh, we used the data collected for Salamandra Atra and for Salamandra Lanzai, and uh, uh, we, we provide the conservation pri priority maps for the, for, the, for the species. Both species are threatened by cl climate change, and also, uh, there are some areas that should be taken in particular consideration in the future, uh, in consideration for the future, because, uh, because they, they are areas where they can be used for reintroduction of the species. At the present, also, we are, we are still continuing with the study on uh, longevity, and uh, we want to understand that we if it is uh, glo global warming has affected uh, the longevity uh, of the species because uh, uh, we, we believe that in, uh, by, by increasing the, the, the amounts of, 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 of temperature, warm temperature, uh, the, the animals will, 
will be, uh, will be active uh, a longer time. But uh, that was uh, what, uh, what uh, I would like to present for Salamandra Lanzai Salamandrata. I don't know if you want to make uh, questions for the moment, then I will switch on the other argument. Thank you very much for this uh, presentation. And I think we make a quick break here for questions um, concerning the salamanders. Is there someone who has a question on the floor? Hello. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I just have a question regarding the cattle. Do you know if there is any sort of regulations or any talk with the locals to try to find a solution to avoid uh, having uh, too many like animals uh, on the... Uh well, it is very difficult to... to yeah, of course, we, we had the contacts, uh, but uh, there's not a regulation for this. And especially, as I, as I said it is, uh, this morning already, talking about uh, local authorities uh, uh, regarding amphibians, it is not always easy. And especially when you uh, collide with uh, economic interest, uh, it is even more difficult uh, to talk about uh, this with uh, people with uh, cattle. It is not, uh, not uh, so clear. Even with the uh, car traffic, uh, which should be much more regulated, is, it is complicated. Because at the end, uh, local people, they, they claim that they could use this uh, um, road to, to reach the, the refuges uh, up in the valleys. Uh, and uh, also they want that uh, uh, people could assess the, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this road. In France, for example, the situation appears much better because there is a sort of navette allowing to, to, to take uh, people, tourists, to, to reach the, the several destination. In Italy, the situation is much, uh, much far from being realized, so it is quite difficult. Any other questions? Other question for Franco Andreone? Si ce ce n'est pas le cas, il y a une question. Oui. Encore une question. Thank Merci. You. Um, just because of uh, Lonzai uh, species, uh, you believe you don't believe that uh, Salamandra Salamandra will al also go upper uh, with a warmer, uh, with a global warming in the future. Then uh, well. it will also become a kind of. Uh, we, we don't know, we don't know yet so uh, we, we we never found at at least until now a place where there is uh, or there was uh, a syntopy between the two species so uh, salamandra salamandra is present until a certain altitude elevation then uh, salamandra lanzai is much uh, much higher of course we cannot exclude this and uh, it is possible that uh, salamandra salamandra in the future may move up uh, up in the mountains but we do not uh, know yet but uh, uh, for sure in the future we will check uh, about this as well any other questions d'autres questions si ce n'est pas le cas uh, on va continuer avec franco maintenant il va parler sur les espèces de madagascar et les travaux qu'il a fait là-bas Thank you very much. Uh, sorry for, for being so repetitive again. 